praise God. God's Bible is turned to the book of Hebrews in the fourth chapter. We're going to begin reading in verse 6. Amen. Hebrews chapter 4. Begin reading in verse 6. Amen. That's the Lord away from the heart. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 6. Say amen when you get there. chapter 4, verse 6. The Bible says, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein. And they to whom it was first preached entered enter not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered in his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. If you would stretch forth your hands and pray with us. Lord God, we just praise your holy name, Lord God. I thank you for the great spirit of the Holy Ghost that I felt in this place already. Lord God, I pray that you till up the soil of each and every heart and soul represented under the sound of my voice so that seed would fall on good ground, Lord God, and bring forth much fruit, Lord Jesus. Don't let us just hold on to this word inside these four walls, but let us take it with us outside and apply it to our each and every day life and live in the victory that you paid for over 2,000 years ago. Lord God, I pray for these old lips of clay, Lord Jesus, that you preach through me, Lord God, and on them, Lord Jesus. And don't let me say anything outside of, your, outside of your will today, Lord God. Just let everything be done to uplift and edify the church and meet with us in the altars and do what only you can do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. I want to preach to you on the subject of unbelief today. Amen. I want to preach to you on the subject of unbelief today. Amen. And the author of this book, of the Bible says, some believe it was Paul, some, some disagree, but we'll just say the author, amen, to keep confusion down, praise the Lord, is telling us in this passage of Scripture, and when we first started reading in verse 6, that the Jewish people or the children of Israel in, in, the, uh, in the Old Testament allowed their unbelief to not let them receive the promise of God in going into the promised land. That's what he's talking about in the beginning of these scriptures. And we all know the story. Most of us do it. We've been reading the Bible any period of time. We know that, that there were 12 spies that Moses picked out of each tribe of the children, the, the, the children of Israel. And they would go in the promised land and spy this land out and bring back a report of what they should do and what they'd be up against. And we all know that two of them, Joshua and Caleb, they said, let us go up at once. Amen. We're able. We're more than able to go and overtake these people because because that is what God has promised us, amen. But we have ten that were not, amen. And they brought a bad report. They were wor worried about how big the people were. They were worried about how strong the cities were. They had all these worries about the adversity that they would face. And because of their unbelief, God told them that you will not go across that Jordan, amen. Because of their unbelief, God told them that you will die wandering around in the wilderness, amen. And you will not inherit the promise that God has promised you and go into the land that's flowing with milk and honey. So their unbelief hindered them into receiving the things that God had promised them, amen. And in verse 11, the author turns to us. Amen. He said, let us praise the Lord. Amen. I believe we read the Bible. We need to believe that he's speaking directly to us. We need to make this thing personal. I know that the geography is great. 
the time period is wonderful and we need to understand some of it. But when we read the Word of God, we need to think, we need to believe that God is speaking directly to us. And He is. In verse 11, He said, Let us labor, therefore, to enter in to the, that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And you say, well, preacher, what's he talking about? Because labor and rest, it just kind of coincides with one another. I mean, you know, if I'm out there working out in the yard laboring, I'm not getting the rest that I need over there on the couch like I did yesterday. Come on, somebody. Amen. i got to get some rest every now and then, praise the Lord. But he, what he's saying in this scripture is that if you want to live in the joy that's unspeakable, that's provided by the Spirit of God, if you want to live in the peace that surpasses all understanding that's provided by God, if you want to live in the strength and the power and the promises of God, then you have to make a commitment to follow Jesus Christ in order to live in the rest that He has provided. Amen? You have to make a decision to commit your life in order to live in this rest. Can you say amen? amen. That's what he's saying, to labor, to, to, to labor for the rest. Amen. You know, and, and if you don't decide to commit to Jesus Christ, then guess what? The promises of God are not for you. The peace that surpasses understanding is not for you. The joy that's unspeakable is not for you. The power of God is not for you if you decide not to make the decision to commit to His will. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But we have to make that decision in order to have to, uh, to live in that rest. Praise the Lord. Our unbelief can cause several things to happen to us in our life and in our walk with Christ. Amen. It can cause us not to receive the blessings and promises of God. Because the promises are only for the believer. I mean, I know that the world just says, well, everybody's saved and everybody's a child of God. That ain't the case. Amen. Come on, somebody. I know that everybody in your heart knows the difference between that. Amen. That is not the case. The only way that you can become a child of God is to take that step of faith and be saved by His grace. Amen. That's the only way that you can do it. Praise the Lord. And be washed in the blood of Jesus. But we can't receive the blessings and the promises of God if we we have unbelief in our hearts. Can you say amen? amen? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, amen, and verse 6, he tells us, he says, but without faith is it impossible to please him. Without believing in him and having faith in him, it is impossible to please God. You can't do it. Praise the Lord. But he goes on to say, and this is really what I wanted to touch on in this scripture. He says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. Amen. Amen. For him to come, for them that cometh to God must believe that first he is. Amen. We have to first believe that he is who he says he is. Can you say amen? That's the only, that's how we first have to come to him. We have to believe in such a way that we believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is who He says He is. Amen. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the way maker. Amen. He is these things. Praise the Lord. And I know and I'm going to go through something that I've went through many a times. Amen. But I want to go through it again. There is two types of belief in this Bible. There's two types. There's a John 3.16 belief, and there's a James 2.19 belief. These two types of words are the same words in the King James Version, but they mean two different meanings if you look at it. Amen. James 3.16 belief produces some things, praise God. It produces trust. It produces uh, obedience. Come on, somebody. It produces repentance in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. And this type of belief in John 3, 16, belief, that says, Whosoever believeth on the Son of God shall inherit eternal life, amen, is a different kind of belief than in James 2, 19. Because in James 2, 19, the Bible says that even the devils in hell believe that there is a Jesus 
Christ. Amen. And this world has got it all mixed up in the thing that you can just believe that Jesus exists and be a saved child of God. Amen. That is not going to cut it right there. I've got plenty of people that I know that believe that there is a Jesus. Amen. There is an only begotten Son of God. And they just as lost as a goose in Detroit. Come on, somebody. They are lost. Amen. There's no repentance in their life. There's no saving grace. There's no come on now. There's not this. There's no there's no trust in their life. Amen. There's two types of belief. Amen. And we've got to get a hold of this thing. And we've got to believe that He is. Amen. He is who He says He is. Praise God. And He will do what He says He will do. Praise God. That's not James two nineteen. Believe right there. Amen. You know you got some people. That you can call and there ain't no doubt that they will be there. My daddy is one of those people. I can call my dad and if he's physically able and he ain't out of town working somewhere, I can guarantee you in just a few minutes he's going to be pulling up where I'm at. Can you say amen? amen? I believe that. When he says he's going to be there, I believe it because I know it's happened time and time and time again. There's some people. That you can call on and you know that they're able to be there, but you just kind of got to step back and see how it plays out. That's the two types of beliefs that I'm talking about, amen. One, you know, amen, you trust and you believe that he's going to be there. And the other one, you just kind of believe it can happen. Can you say amen? amen? Praise the Lord. So we have to believe in the Lord in such a way that He is going to do what He says He's going to do. And then we have to believe, then we believe that He is when we believe in that manner. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Then it goes on to say in the last part of that verse, He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. He is a rewarder. First we got to believe that He is Amen. But then we gotta be a we gotta be a diligent seeker to receive the reward that He has for us. Praise God. There's that decision of commitment that I was just talking about. Amen. In order to get the reward that He has for us, we have to be a diligent seeker. Amen. That's the same thing with the promises of God. The only promise that's in that Bible uh, that, that, that we don't have to do something for is salvation. Can you say Amen? But every other promise in that that Bible takes an act of obedience in order to receive the reward. Amen. Come on now, stay with me. Praise the Lord. But the decision of being a diligent seeker is the decision to commit. And when you diligently seek God, you're making that decision, amen, to Him that regardless of what may happen, what changes, what sacrifices we got to make, that we're going to diligently seek Him in order to receive the reward. We have to diligently seek Him. And I'm not going to go into all that, praise the Lord, but, you know, I'm missing Brother Devin here today. I was going to show you all a little something, but I'm going to go a different route. You know, uh, when somebody comes, when something comes up in our lives that we know good and well, ain't God. Come on, somebody. Most of us in, this, in, in the church, in, in this house, they will be living for God long enough. We know that something pops up that ain't God. Amen. When something like that pops up, he's telling us when we're diligently seeking him that we can remove it. Yeah. When we see that thing pop up, whatever it may be, that we know good and well this ain't God, then we just remove it because we know that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. We're not worried about the power, what, where is this, that, and the other. We know that God, he is, come on somebody, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I used to be on them old cigarettes, and I'm telling you right now, I used to smoke them like they was going out of style. Amen. But one day, God spoke to my heart, and he said that he is who he says he is. And he is a rewarder 
of those that diligently seek Him. Praise the Lord. But you know how it is with flesh involved when you're trying to get off of something. Amen. It was like, well, let's go over here. Maybe I can get this patch and put it on. Come on, somebody. And then I can go over here and I, I just keep a few in the cabinet. Amen. Come on, somebody. I know what I'm talking about if you've been through it. Amen. Oh, but I heard this on the on TV the other day. I can get this little bit over here. This is going to help me. I used to go swimming in a place over in Fairview, Alabama. Called a pile the pipeline. And man, that was the rickety, raggediest little tree out there with two platforms that had a fork up top, and I would never go up there. But I'd get on top of that platform, and son, I'd be scared slap to death. My cousins, they'd be picking on me, calling me a sissy and all this, that, and the other. But I'd sit up there, and I'd think in my mind of every situation of how it could go bad before I jump. And that's what we do. We don't just jump and wait on God to be a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. We sit from the sideline and we think about everything that can go bad before we jump. Amen. I came to tell you today, there was a time I got on that second platform and I didn't worry about it anymore. I just jumped off that dude. Amen. And I'm telling you today, if you're struggling with something in this house, praise God, that God is, He is who He says He is, and He is a rewarder of those that do it and they seek Him. And we need to stop worrying about how He's going to do it and just jump on in and praise Him while we're going down. Praise Him when we're coming up. Praise Him in the morning. Praise Him in the evening. Come on, somebody, because He is a reward. Yes. Of those that diligently seek Him, praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. It's the things that we hold on to cause us that unbelief. And we just kind of just veer off course. That we stay up on that platform. I remember one time, little John, I sat up there and I taught myself into climbing back down the ladder. Son, I've never heard the end of that. All the way home. Only my horses we used to ride. Boy, you ain't nothing but this. You ain't nothing but that. You talk a man game until you get up there and do this. That's what I'm telling you. We don't need to climb down the ladder. We just need to believe that he is who he says he is. Praise God. Amen. Amen. See, our unbelief, it can also... Hinder us from receiving miracles. Yes. Amen. It can also hinder us from being healed. Come on, somebody. Amen. It can also hinder us from being delivered from different things, as I may mention already. Amen. If we turn over to Matthew chapter uh, 13 and verse 53, we see exactly that happened in this passage of Scripture. It says, And it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them in their synagogue and so much that they were astonished and said, Whence have this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not this the mother, uh, is not his mother Mary and his brother James and Joseph and Simon and Judas and his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence have this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto him, A prophet was not without honor, and save his own country, and in his own house. And he said, And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. We hinder God because of our unbelief. We hinder him from doing what He wants to do because of our unbelief. Amen. We hinder God because we think, oh, it's just the carpenter's son. When the carpenter's son was really God manifested into the flesh, and He was more than able to do what He came to do, but the people hindered Him by their unbelief in their heart. This man was God in the flesh. He can do anything. Praise the Lord. Sarah, she, she laughed at God. God, I'm 99 years old, and you sitting here telling me that I'm missing a half a young, and she laughed at God. But he promised Abraham and Sarah that they would have a young man and his name would be Jacob and he would be the seed of God's chosen people. Amen. But here he was saying, you're fixing to have a young man. And she laughed at God because she was more worried about how God was going to do it instead that he was going to do what he said he was going to do. 
In he, uh, Romans chapter 4, we just went over this in our Bible study. In Romans chapter 4 and verse 19, it says, And being weak, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not, as everybody say, staggered not. He staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Praise the Lord for that. Come on, somebody. Praise God for that. He staggered not at the promises of God because he knew that God was able to do what he said he was going to do. Come on now, here today. I feel like sometimes we sit, we're we sitting in Sarah's position and we're praying about things and we're looking at things and we think we're believing, but we're sitting on the sideline wondering how he's going to do it. Come on, somebody. Wonder we while well, sitting there in this good job that I got down there where I worked at. They give me a promotion in the first night. I was sitting there telling Sarah, well, what about this? Amen. What about that? What about that? She said, just pray about it. When they ask you about it again, God's going to give you the words to say, and that'll be it. Come on, somebody. That'll be it. Praise the Lord. We get in that situation to where we got to know all the details before we'll ever trust God. Amen. When we need to quit worrying about how He's going to provide. Amen. When we need to quit worrying about where I'm going to go when I get removed out of that toxic situation. We need to quit worrying about how he's going to fix that situation in our life. we got to quit worrying about it and just believe that he is. Yeah. And he's going to do it. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Man, we get so sidetracked because the devil gets in our mind and gives us the doubt and unbelief and all these other things when we just need to quit worrying about it and give it to him and watch it come to pass. Because as I sang that song, brother, I praise him every day. Amen. I ain't never saw a day that he wasn't faithful. Praise the Lord. I was fishing over in Dolphin Island with Marshall one time. Amen. We was going out and it was right at the crack of daylight. Praise the Lord. And that big old sun was coming up over those that water out there. And I said, praise the Lord. He's still coming through with his promise. Because at the beginning of the Bible, he said, let there be light. And there was light. And here we are some thousands of years later. And he's still faithful on his promises. Because he said in his word that were yes and amen. And that nothing of this world can get in the way of what God has promised you. Amen. He's still coming up every morning. Amen. Because he's faithful. He is who he says he is. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 14 and 12. It says, There's a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And I'm telling you right now, we come to these crossroads in our walk with God every day, and some of them we just blow right through. You know, they ain't, ain't nothing. We just, I mean, I ain't going that way. I'm going God's way. Amen. We just come to these crossroads, and, and these crossroads, it's either go your way or, or keep going God's way. And some of them we can just go right on through. Ain't nothing to it. I ain't fooling around with that. I ain't, I ain't doing it. But some of them we come to. There's something life-changing that's going to happen on the other side of that crossroad. Amen. And sometimes we let our unbelief get in the way yes. of us continuing on. But I came to tell you today that if you don't keep going forward and you choose, every time you choose your own way, you die spiritually just a little bit more. Amen. Every time we disobey God, He calluses our heart just a little bit more. You ever seen somebody where they quit coming to midweek service and all of a sudden they, 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 they quit coming to Sunday night service and then before that they, they ain't coming to church but about you know two, maybe three times a week and then it gets down about once a week and then before you know it they're completely out of the will of God. Amen. And, and that's because every time we disobey God, He calluses our heart to where we don't feel that conviction as bad as we did the first time. 
I remember when I first went out into that life again, I backslid on the Lord after I got saved, and the first time I partaked of what He delivered me from, it crushed me. But the sixth or seventh time, I didn't feel a thing. Because every time we disobey God, He cows us at heart. Amen. And every time we choose our own way, amen, we die just a little bit spiritually because we allow our unbelief to dictate the way we live. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, sister. I'm closed. Jesus says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. And he also says in Matthew chapter 7 that the, the way is narrow and only few be that find it. And I remember when I got pulled out of that life, man, there was like so many blessings that God just wanted to dump on me, man. He was just, he, he had them just waiting on me to get where I needed to get so he could dump those blessings out on me. But for so long in my life, my unbelief hindered me from receiving those blessings. Maybe some of you are in that position today where your unbelief of how it's going to turn out is hindering you from receiving one of the greatest blessings of your life. Of how I'm going to pay this. Or how I'm going to do that. Stop worrying about that. Just do what God says. If He told you to do it, He already made the provisions for you after you made the decision to do it. Can you say amen? That's how faithful He is. He's not going to leave you hanging. That's not who God is. He's not a liar. The devil is the father of lies. But I'm telling you, one day I decided just to just to believe what he said to it. Don't matter what and I'm telling you, there's times when we get to that path to where it's so narrow that only you know, you've got to suck on in and get through that. And some of the people in your life, some of the things in your life, some of the hobbies that you have, some of the, the activities that you partake in, they can't fit through that way. And you've got to release them. But I can tell you right now, everything that I've laid down for God was more than worth it. Praise God. I'm experiencing a life that I could only dream about on the other side of the bloodline. Praise the Lord. Amen. It wasn't short and long after we got the pastor in here. My daughter, which is 11 now, she come up to Mama and said, I want to get baptized. And guess what? Daddy was the one that done it. Praise God. Shortly after that, my wife got baptized. I wouldn't have been able to experience that. Some of you I baptized in here. Praise the Lord. Some of you I've got to watch come down to this altar and believe He is who He says He is and be transformed in the name of Jesus and go on and be living for Him and be faithful. I've seen that. I've seen some of you get healed instantly. Brother Brent's daughter come up here and had a knot on the back of her head. You know, is anybody, any parent, we're going to be worried. We're thinking the worst. Here we are going trying to sit on the sidelines and oh, is it this? Is it that? Is it this? And everybody's guilty of it, but they brought her up here and we did what the Bible says to do. We prayed over, we laid hands on her. And we just believed that God was going to be God and every man was going to be alive. Praise the Lord. I sent my sister Sarah a message the next day checking on her. I said, what about that night? She said, what night? Come on, somebody. He healed her. I've seen these things, amen. Because from the way it got narrow, I released everything that I didn't need in my life and just continued to set, set my eyes on him and keep seeking him first, amen. Because everything that we need in this life, he said, seek ye first, amen. The kingdom of God and all of His righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Amen. That's the promise. And we need to believe that He is. And He is going to reward us for that for those that diligently seek Him. Stand with me all over the house of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. We're going to open up these altars. Amen. If you're not saved in this house today, I pray that you don't leave until you get that way. Praise God. I'm not, I mean, so I will every now and then if I feel that, but I just feel that to open up the altars. And if you're not saved, there's a place at this altar for you. Praise God. And if I was you, I'd just ask God. I'd say, Lord, I know who you are. I believe you are who you say you are. I believe that you are the Son of God. 
and I'm an old right sinner, and I need to be saved by your grace today. And I promise you, He will meet you right here, right now, in the middle of your situation, in the middle of your circumstance, and save your soul. Amen. You may have got to get cleaned up for that. Amen. You can let Him do all that. Praise God.